on YouTube. This is going to be part number six. And my phone may have died on me on part number five. So, good for everybody. Probably won't get to see it. Um, and that's where we did this, where we took our wires and we brought them back to the individual resistors for each of the different sets. And then we took all the positives and we put them together here. And so now we're just getting ready to take these wires and solder them together and go ahead and tap them to the individual servo wire that we've detached from down in the back of the plane there which incidentally was not that it matters which one you would take but it just happened to be this one So what we need to do now is pretty straightforward, but um, one complication is that the heat shrink I used was one millimeter, so it's quite small. And so we'll obviously need to put some heat shrink over this so that we don't have shorting out going on there. So we're gonna get a little bit of this stuff here, see if we can use that to cover over I don't know if that's going to be big enough to get over these larger resistors. Now the positive lines are all going to be positive lines, so it's probably not so critical. That's going to be a little bit too small for the bigger ones. So we'll get we have some different sized heat shrink. This stuff should be big enough. And if you're using heat shrink in this application, which you may find yourself needing to do that. Just remember that all the stuff, it does add weight and you want to try to keep it as minimal as possible while still getting the job done. If you need heat shrink, you need heat shrink, so don't be afraid to use it, but just keep in mind it does, does add a lot of weight. So, but that being said, it's critical, so you need it. Now you don't have to cover up the actual resistor itself. You just have to have enough to cover up anything that would have been exposed. So in my case, I'm just cutting it so it's a little bit more appropriately sized and dropping things as usual. Actually don't like the way that that worked. So I'm gonna cut it off. So as you can see, it's kind of a big pain in the butt if you have to do that. So the reason I decided that I didn't want that was because I needed to actually hold on to the resistor. 
otherwise it'll just have a tendency of sliding back and you can see I got a 2S battery that I will be using to fly this plane so I can plug that in here in a little bit so we'll try this again hopefully we'll have success this time and we're going to end up covering up most of the resistor anyway There you go. Okay. Okay, so that'll definitely protect. Not a very good compression ratio on this heat shrink though. Not real impressed with that. I'm just gonna try this other heat shrink. It's a little bit thinner, but it should work better for the compression ratio. Meaning it gets squished down when it gets heated up. My estimation skills are waning as it gets later or earlier in the morning, whichever one you want to look at, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, so we'll just do that. Oh, for God's sake, just work. Very hot. Okay, so now that we have those um, more or less just the way they need to be, now we can take and tie these all together on this half, and those those are all going to be going together. So at this point, you could you could heat shrink over the whole shebang too. If you knew that's what you wanted to do, which I don't think I'm going to probably necessarily do that. I haven't really made a 100% decision, but it might not be a bad idea. It would be nice if I had just the perfect size heat shrink to go over it. Something like this, maybe. Because the thing is we're going to have these exposed connection points here. So that should take care of it. So I think I'll just do the big piece here. And then I'll do a smaller piece as well. And then that'll protect everything the way it needs to be protected. So now obviously this stuff is real stiff so I don't want to have to depend on that to get back to the to the wires itself so we'll have to probably take a small piece of wire which we could use uh, wire that we have used in past projects the little pieces that are left over you don't need that much power handling capability on this particular piece Honestly, in, in this application, it would be nice if I could find something that matched up kind of the color scheme we're dealing with here, which is like power and ground. Okay, so that's probably a good idea. Because this stuff is all stiff wire, so I'm just concerned it's going to have a certain amount of weakness to it. Okay, so the red can become white for positive. And so we'll actually tie this together here. I don't even know if we ever actually technically soldered that together. So I'll just wrap that around just like that. And then we can transition that with a piece of heat shrink here, but we can add that after we solder. Okay, so we'll just make sure we get that nice and hot there. 
gets a good, good penetration on the, the solder. Okay, so we, we actually have um, a bunch of the red and black heat shrink here. So we'll just find one that's the right size. And that looks like it's probably about the right size. Just chop suey a little bit of this. Oh, look at that. We already had a piece cut. That's convenient. And it looks like it's about the right size. Let's just double check that real quick. Probably cutting it a little bit close. Not really any point in doing this project if you end up losing your plane over it. <clears throat> My experience with things like this is it's really, really cool until you crash a plane over it. And then you'll wish you didn't do it. Okay, so that's that's good there. And then our negative side will be, we gotta go ahead and feed this on now, our heat shrink. Just gonna go over the bundle of resistors when we're done. And then for the moment, we will take our negative wire, which is gonna be just whatever we need of this. We shouldn't need that whole length, of course. Strip back a pretty good amount. And we can feed on the other sizes when we're done. Okay, so we need to have a little bit to wrap together, but we don't need a ton, so we'll go ahead and cut here. So normally I'd like to have a, a little wrap. kind of give me something to hook on to something something like that doesn't have to be that exactly and then once you get your little hook of course these were twisted together before just seconds ago now they're separating because I trimmed Trim them to length without having them tinned together, which probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to get them tinned together first. Um, really shouldn't have to do that, but I guess it's life in the big city. You kind of got to do what you got to do, right? Clean the tip. Okay, make sure we have good solder connection. Yes, we do. Okay, so now I want to take this heat shrink and actually hold off for just a second. I'll put this other piece over first, which is just going to give us a good transition down here where it really is critical. And then we'll just go ahead and get that heated up real quick. We want that to hang onto the resistor so it won't slip down easily. Okay, so we got that. Probably nice and toasty. Then we'll just come down with the bigger piece of heat shrink. Just make sure we're not missing anything obvious. To be honest, that just seems so unnecessary. We're really only covering a very small amount now. But. This is where the added weight's not gonna be. 
it's hard to justify not adding the weight for the added security we get from it. Okay. Got to keep that heat away from those those wires on that side. Which is really awkward because you sort of need to get the heat shrink to shrink down, but you can't heat up any of your wires. Okay, so now the cool part is, at this point, we could, you know, twist or whatever it is that makes this kind of neat. Which I'm going to do. It'll also make it a, just a little bit stronger because there's no changing it at this point. It's pretty much the way it's going to be unless we literally go through and separate things, which I hope we never have to do. Okay, so now decision time. We have to try to figure out about how long we want to try to make this. Hmm. I think we make it no less than this. I think that's all the more we can do. If we do any more, it's just gonna get ridiculous. And uh, it's already probably gonna be a little bit of that as it is. Because by the time we bend all this stuff back and forth, just looking up inside there, it's gonna be forced back here. And it'll be fine, but... See what I'm saying? I'd really like to eliminate some of that extra wire. Because remember, that's going to go back too. Well, safe than sorry, I suppose, in this case. Rather be safe than sorry here, guys. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and... Strip this brown wire back a little bit. Kids don't want to strip with that. Um, what type of stripper can I use? No. I think the easiest way actually on this will be to just use the, the nippers on the back here. 